All right, so the last uh, topic for this week is going to be about menus. And you've, uh, I, I'm sure you've seen menus before because you've been programming in Visual Studio this whole time. Uh, menus hold those little dialogues like file and edit and build and debug in Visual Studio and in many other applications in Windows. So let's talk about how to actually add them to your own programs. Uh, we'll be covering how to, you know, the, the first three uh, sections of the apply the concepts part. Uh, very briefly, of course, you should go through this yourself, actually get that practice doing it yourself, but I'll try to cover some of the really important pieces from the textbook material here. All right, so menus allow the user to run commands using a GUI. So uh, you click on a actual an actual menu, and then you get this list of commands that can be run, and you can click on those commands, and you know the program will actually run that command and do something for you. Uh, every menu has a title, for example, file or edit or project or build or debug, and then menus hold commands submenu titles and separators sort of like what we see right here in this screenshot uh in visual basic the menu strip control it actually allows you to add menus to a windows form so when you actually click on the on the title of the menu it uh, displays a list of options that you're able to look at clicking on a command will run that command and then clicking on a submenu will open a new menu la layer although you should only use one level of menus unless absolutely necessary because having layer inside of layer inside of layer inside of layer can get a little bit messy every element inside of a menu all those commands and even the uh, sub menus um, they all are objects with their own properties um, which actually can be referred to in code so the two properties that we're really going to be thinking about are the name which refer to the menu element in the code, and the text, which are a caption that display, you know, the purpose of what that menu element is. So for example, if we have a file menu and it has an element inside that is meant to exit the program, if you click it, then we might make a menu element with the name MNU file exit uh, with the text value saying, exit. Now MNU file exit is actually goes along with some of the uh, guidelines for names that we're using in this textbook right here. Lowercase MNU is our ID that shows us that we are working with a menu item. And then with the name, we're saying file to refer to the fact that this is inside of the file menu, and then exit to show that this is the exit command inside of the file menu. Now you can also name the file menu itself. Uh, you might name that something like MNU file, uh, but that's its own thing. Uh, we'll get into that as we talk about you know, actually making these things. I'll try to demonstrate a little bit of how to actually create your menu. And then the text is what tells the user what the actual Thing does when they click on it. So exit tells them that it is going to exit the program. For some GUI guidelines, title caption should be one word with only the first letter capitalized. So file, view, edit, project, build, all of that. Uh, they should also have a unique access key. Uh, so if you have file and then you maybe had some find uh, menu title, uh, find should not have the same access key as file. You'd have to find a different one. Uh, so all of those should have unique access keys and they should also be different than the access keys you use for your controls, like buttons and all that kind of stuff. So be very careful about that. Uh, menu item captions should be uh, one to three words long. So if you're inside of a menu, you could have like exit, that's one word, or at most three, uh, you know, say sort ascending would be a good two word caption, something like that. They should use book title capitalization. So all of the first letters of words should be capitalized except for prepositions. And the access keys should be unique within the menu. So uh, you can use 
the same access key within different menus themselves. But the access keys inside of a menu should be unique from each other and they should be different than all of the menu title access keys and they should also be different from the uh, button access keys as well. Now some Windows conventions for menus. Uh, if you have a file menu, uh, which you would have a file menu for things like opening files, saving files, printing files, and exiting the program, uh, if you do have a file menu, it should be the first on the menu bar, if it's at all present. And that's not to say you should always have a file menu to exit a program necessarily, but if you do have a file menu to contain all of these different commands right here, it should be the leftmost on the menu bar. Also, you should use shortcut keys for commonly used menu items, and you should try to stick with standardized shortcut keys if there are any available. So for example, um, control S for file save and control C for edit copy. All right, so I'm going to briefly show off uh, how to add a menu to your um, program. Uh, what I've done is I've expanded the toolbox, pinned it in place just for fun. And then I've gone to the menus and toolbar section of the toolbox and I'm going to take this menu strip tool and drag it just anywhere on the program. Uh, it does not matter where I put it, so I'll add it there. Oh, there we go. And now you'll see this little thing down here. And also up here, you'll see this area, which actually shows where the menu strip is going to be. Now to add a new menu to the menu bar, you click into this type here area, and then you type the caption for your title. Now this is also going to include the access keys. So I'm going to type file, type in, type in an ampersand, oh, F-I-L-E, just like that. And now the application has a file menu. By the way, I've clicked out of this menu entirely, but I can click menu strip and that gets me back into this area. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this file uh, right here. Um, and I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to click on file right here and we can see that the text property has and file. Uh, what I'm going to do is rename the file tool, tool strip menu item to be MNU file like that. Um, and then inside of file right here, I'm just going to add the, uh, add a command that lets me exit the program. Now you'll see when I clicked this, a couple things happened. Uh, for one, it gives me this entry down here, which would allow me to add a new entry into this menu, but I'm not interested in doing that right now. It also gives me a little thing I can type out there that would allow me to create, you know, make whatever I'm about to type into a sub menu, but I'm not also going to do that just yet. I'm just going to type in exit, uh, and I'm going to uh, actually use the access key X when I type in exit. So E ampersand XIT, just like that. And now we have our exit button. Um, when I click on it, you'll see that it puts this weird arrow here and allows me to create a submenu, but that doesn't actually mean the um, submenu has actually been created. It's just a regular menu item. It's just giving me this option in case I wanted to make it a submenu, which I don't. So now uh, we have exit right here and it's, this is inside of the file menu now menu file has the name mnu file so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give exit which is inside of file the name of its parent plus the word exit afterwards so now this is mnu file exit um and then if this was actually a sub menu rather than a command then anything i would type here would get the name of its parent so mnu file exit plus then the name of its command, but we're not doing that right now. I'm just giving this MNU file exit. All right, I've skipped a little bit ahead in the instructions right here. Uh, what I wanted to show off is how to actually assign a shortcut key to a menu item. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign control A to um, this sort ascending shortcut key like this, which isn't the best um, 
key since control A is usually select all text, but we're just going to go with it this time. So right here under the shortcut keys property, I can click this arrow to the right of none. And this actually lets me determine the modifier and key that I can use to uh, create the shortcut key that will run the ascent sort ascending command right here. So uh, I'll use control as the modifier and then the letter A. Uh, and then we can see control A is the shortcut key down here. And next to ascending, we have this little thing that says control A. So when we actually define the um, ascending command right here, using control A, we'll actually create it. All right, and now if you want to add a separator bar, you can actually go to this, you know, type here box, but there's a drop down menu that you can click which allows you to put in a few things like a uh, combo box, a text box, a menu item, all that kind of stuff. But we're going to just put in a separator and that gives you this beautiful little line where you can then separate out whatever you want to. And that's really helpful for visual clarity for a lot of people. So that's the, uh, that's the idea there. Now, if you want to actually have a um, menu item do anything when the user clicks or uses the shortcut key or the access key or anything like that, then you have to use the uh, dot click event of these um, menu item objects. So uh, in our case for file exit, it'll be menu file exit dot click, an event procedure that handles that. Uh, we can just call me.close as we have for our exit buttons in the past or for this um, sort ascending click uh, thing for our sort ascending uh, command which you know i'll leave you to actually see what this application is doing with regards to like sorting data ascending and descending as you go through the apply the concepts things but when the user clicks on the sort ascending button, uh, they will invoke the MNU sort ascending underscore click procedure, which will then do whatever it needs to in order to sort the, uh, you know, this continents array that's holding some list of names of, or th this array of names of continents, you know, it'll sort that array and then add the contents of the array to the list box in order to display everything in order. And we have a similar version for sorting descending for a uh, descending sort of thing. And then this original order is actually a really cool example. Uh, this original order is why I think you should look at um, how they handle working with files and arrays and the list boxes uh, for, you know, sorting and ascending and descending and original order because, you know, as a bit of an aside, the listbox uh, dot sorted method that we showed before, the quick and dirty way of sorting things in ascending order, doesn't work for descending order and it doesn't work to preserve the original order of anything. So uh, this is actually a very worthwhile thing to look at. Just if you skim through A9.1 through A9.3, I highly recommend you do. But all that aside, uh, you're using these click events for each of the menu items. Not, you know, file and sort, but exit, you know, file exit, sort ascending, sort descending, sort original order. Those click events are what you use in order to actually run your commands. Right, and that is menus. And with that, that's the end of our content for this chapter. So enjoy working with files. It'll be a lot of fun, I'm sure. And enjoy having menus to play with now.